Good morning and welcome to News 9. I'm Nolan Pinto. Now, heavy rains have continued to lash several parts of the state once again. The district administration has ordered the closure of all educational institutions for two days in Kodugu. Now, following heavy rain in Madikeri and Bagamandala, which is the catchment area of the Kaveri, there was flooding along the banks of the river downstream. The normal life has been completely thrown out of gear. Now, the Kaveri is approaching the danger mark close to Triveni Sangama at Bagamandala. In some stretches, the river was flowing over the Bagamandala Madikeri road, making it very difficult for the commuters and vehicles to pass by. Well, you can also see that, uh, or clearly see that visibility was affected when it was pouring, and now the after effects in certain areas over there with the roads completely inundated with water. We're told that uh, many low lying areas have also been flooded. Water has entered most many homes as well. Now the rain has continued to shower its blessings on Karwar and many places in the coastal Malnad and semi-arid areas receiving day-long rain. Navar, Kumta, Nkola, Karwar, Shirsi, Siddapur and Yallapur received day-long drizzle and intermittent heavy rain. Now Bhatkal, Mungod and Joida received heavy rain while Halial and Shirsi received drizzles. Now, people staying in island villages and on the riverbanks are now on a high alert as the water level may rise drastically any moment. Now, heavy downpour continuing in coastal Karnataka has been inflicting loss in terms of lives and property. Rainwater entered various houses in the coastal districts. All the rivulets and rivers are overflowing. A number of families have been shifted to safer places by the district administration. Well, you can clearly see the scene in uh, Shimoga over here. Now in Shimoga district, the water level in all major reservoirs has also considerably increased. There you can see it in different uh, districts or different parts of Karnataka. Karwar, Chikmangalur, Udupi, Madikeri, Shimoga, continuous rain. In fact, in some areas it's been raining continuously for more than 24 long hours. And while the people are extremely happy that finally the monsoon has hit the mainland, hit the state, it's raining continuously. Farmers are extremely happy. It's also causing a lot of misery, especially in the urban areas. Due to, well, we all know due to encroachment in the catchment areas, due to encroachment of uh, drains, due to encroachments of various types. And, hen and hence, you see their roads being flooded and uh, people put to all sorts of problems. Now, it's not just in Karnataka, but the monsoon is wreaking havoc in Mumbai as heavy rains continue to lash the city, slowing down traffic and train movement. Now, the Met Department on Tuesday warned of heavy rainfall and high tides of 4.95 metres in Mumbai. The BMC's Disaster Management Department and the sleuths are keeping tight security at all beaches and sea areas in the city over there. According to the alert, the next 72 hours are very crucial for the commercial capital. Now, the monsoon hit the island city in the first week of this month. Heavy downpour brought the city to a virtual standstill. All these are visuals from uh, Mumbai. You can see roads completely flooded. In fact, like mini rivers flowing through the mainland. And many people have had their uh, cars stuck right in the middle of the road. And all because of the engines uh, seizing due to the excess water entering.
Now, in a major victory for India, BRICS will set up a $100 billion development bank and the first president will be from India. Now, the BRICS summit decided to establish the new development bank with an initial authorized capital of $100 billion for which the initial subscribed capital we will be equally shared by the founding members. India will be the first president of the bank while the first chair of the board of governors will be from Russia. The initial subscribed capital shall be of $50 billion US dollars which will be shared equally by the founding members. China won the race for getting the bank's headquarters in Shanghai, even as India also made a pitch for its location in New Delhi. Negotiations to create the bank dragged on for more than two hours. It's critical for strong, balanced and sustainable global economic growth. And before that, uh, for almost two years, as Brazil and India fought China's attempts to get a bigger share in the lender and the others. Negotiations had also been stalled over who would host the bank, China India or South Africa. Now the Five Nation Bloc also said that it would create this 100 billion fund of currency reserves for members to use during balance of payments crises, pointing to concerns that the US Federal Reserve was stepping back in its aggressive efforts to stimulate the US economy, possibly opening the way for interest rate increases in the US. Brazil's president, Dilma Rousseff, said the fund could mitigate the volatility that could emerge from such shifts. Taken together, the new development bank and the contingency fund reflect ambitions of forging a new global economic framework. Nations like Brazil already have a huge development bank that dwarf the World Bank in size. Now still leaders in emerging economic powers share add policy prescriptions coming from the World Bank and the IMF which emerged from the Bretton Woods Monetary Conference in New Hampshire almost 70 long years ago. Urgent reforms of global institutions of governance like the UN Security Council and international financial institutions. We must help shape the WTO regime and open trading regime is critical for strong balance and sustainable global economic growth. Está encerrada a primeira sessão de trabalho dos BRICS.